So for the next session, uh, we have Gary, Gary Glasberg. Gary is the, the showrunner and co-exec producer of NCIS, uh, the US procedural series about a team of special agents investigating crimes related to the Navy or, or Marines. The show's in its 10th season, which has just started on CBS. I think I saw, I saw some ratings, 20, 23 million, I think, consolidated. Yes, we had a good, uh, a good first week in the States. A, a, um, a nice start. Um, and CBS also produces it, and uh, CBS Studios International sells it, so uh, it's, it's got CBS all over it. Um, Gary's worked on, on other drama series, The Mentalist, Bones, Crossing Jordan, and Gary actually joined in 2009, by which point it was very much up and running, and maybe that's a nice place to kick off, Gary, because the show at this point is already big. That must be quite a daunting prospect to come in and, and have to steer that ship. Yeah, no, it, it was an interesting time. First, I just want to thank everyone at MIPCOM um, and Armando, Armando Nunez and, and CBS for inviting me here. Uh, uh, it's been a fantastic trip. Um, uh, it was an interesting entree into the show. The, uh, at the time, uh, Shane Brennan was going off to, to launch NCIS Los Angeles. And, and I was asked to come in and sort of help steer the ship and keep it going. Um, I sat down with Mark Harmon and, uh, and we hit it off and, and, uh, and it's been a very strong partnership ever since. But it's, it's interesting to come in at a time like that when you know, there, there's the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And, and you really wanna, wanna keep things on track and at the same time kind of bring your own voice to it as well. Is that a gradual process? Do you kind of do you, do you have to jump in and find out? <laughs> yeah, no. It, there was very much a, a learning curve to to uh, to the to the whole thing, and and um, I really sort of sat back and kind of watched. I mean, this is a crew and a cast that's worked together um, for a long time, and you want to sort of soak in. Every show has its own sort of differences and quirks about the way that they do things, and my intention is never to come in and turn it into the way that I do things. It's always sort of to take what's there, what I know is working, and then just make it better. And, and, uh, and, and I mean, it, in some senses, that it could have been seen as a, a poison chalice. Could it, could it get any bigger? The numbers were already, already fantastic. Um, but on your watch, I know that the numbers have increased. It's, it does 19 to 20 million on the night, and consistently that, and building, which is, which is something else. And I know, Gary, that you've got one theory that, that actually the fact that the show is also on cable has perhaps brought in another audience, which is interesting. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm asked constantly about why or how the, the show has maintained the ratings and the success that it has. And, and there are so many theories and, and, and hypotheses about, about why it's working. Um, strictly from a, a viewership standpoint, uh, the show airs on USA, on the USA Network in the, in the States um, a lot. It's on, they air it quite a bit. And, and there's a belief that n new viewers found it in reruns on USA, and then that brought them back. They decided to, to try the show on CBS. And, and, uh, and having it rerun as much and the success that it has on USA, I think has really helped us tremendously. And it's brought a whole new audience back to CBS. It's interesting at a time when there's a lot of talk about cable eating into the network share that perhaps this is an example of how the two can work together and you can drag some of that audience back. Very much so. I mean, this is, it's, it's all about sort of the two of us working together and how one sort of feeds into the other. And uh, I'm very appreciative to what the USA has done. I mean, in terms of the distinction between cable and broadcast, there, there are different limits as to what you can do in terms of you know, language and, and subject matter. I wonder, with, with NCIS being a huge show on a broadcast network, how far you can push the envelope, what limitations there are? You know, it's, it's tricky with an 8 o'clock network television show. Um, we, we have a very broad base of fans. We have people that sit down with their families, with their children to watch our show. Um, uh, you know, we, we recognize that there are lines that you can't cross. Um, it's still a crime show. 
Um, we deal with subject matter of terrorism, um, and, and yet we manage to do it in a way that's accessible for people. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a challenge, and yet because I, I have such a gifted cast and a terrific group of writers working with me, you know, we're able to sort of come at things from a standpoint of using a lot of humor, um, juxtaposing the humor with the drama, and, and, it, and it makes it unique. And, and I think that that accessibility is, is uh, what works for us. And NCIS is by no means alone in being a procedural on US network TV, but I wonder what, what makes, in your mind, what distinguishes it from, from the other procedural shows out there? What is it that gives it its unique flavor? It, it, it's funny, I actually don't like to think of it necessarily as a procedural. I, I, I've worked on many of, of these crime shows before, and, and, um, and one of the real pleasures of NCIS is that, um, is, is that it's, it's really not just about the crime and it's not just about the forensics. Um, it, there's been an interesting sort of evolution to the storytelling on the show. In, in early seasons, it was really about the crime and you'd come up with the, with the hook that, that uh, you know, right out of the teaser. Of, of whatever the, was unusual about the, the forensics of it. Um, now, rather than start with a germ of a crime, we tend to start with a character story. We tend to start with something that we'd like to do with our characters, and then the crime, in a way, almost becomes secondary. So, so you thread a crime through the story, uh, but, but, uh, but the drive of it is really what's happening to Gibbs or, or, or Dinozo or, or you know, Cody de Pablo or whatever, one of our characters. Um, and I mean, it, so it, it's a, a procedural but different to the others, but just I wonder, I think you're, you're running the show, I wonder, kind of broadening it out, what, what is it that makes that show, that type of show with a book-ended storyline work so well, and it's not just in the States, it's very popular in France, it's mm -hmm. popular, it's sold into, you know, 200 countries, so it's, it's but what is it about that format that resonates with people? Uh, you know, I, I, I view the show as comfort food um, for, for a lot of people. Uh, you know, you, we, I think we reach such a, a large audience because people come home from work and, and we provide not only, you know, a, a, a complex uh, a, a crime story, um, that has all the, the bits and pieces that go along with it forensically. But, but we like to hopefully make people laugh and, and touch the heart and pathos and, 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 and come at it in, in, in a way where we sort of provide a little bit of everything in 42 minutes. And, 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 and I like to think that that's what separates our show from the, from the others. And CBS Studios International, which sells it around the world, has you know, done a tremendous job. It's, it's all over. The, the place. Are you, are you mindful of that international success or in fact are you just completely focused on making it work for the domestic US audience and that's no, a bonus? No, no, you know part of the reason that it was so important for me to come here and, 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 and meet everyone is the international aspect of this show is tremendous. Um, not only from a storytelling standpoint which uh, the, the real NCIS has an office in every port in the world. Um, there's an NCIS uh, agent on every ship, every US ship in the world. Um, so there's a genuine sort of international flavor to, to our storytelling and reality and, and sort of what it is that they do. So that part of it is important to me. Uh, um, we, we also genuinely recognize the fact that, that, you know, a big part of the success of the show is how we've done worldwide and how that's fed back to the United States. So, so this has been a real treat for me to come and thank everyone and, and really get a sense of it because it's, it's tricky when you're locked up in your little writer's room sure. um, uh, and heading back and forth to editing and, and, and you lose some perspective on just how many people you're touching and, and uh, so it's nice to, nice to oh, be here. Fact, Gary, let me, let me interject. I mean, what, one question maybe I should have asked at the, at the top was, uh, why are you here? Aren't you halfway through? Uh, or you're, you're in, in, in the nicest possible way in that you're deep in production in yeah, no, season 10. How, how is that I, possible? I, I, I came because I wanted to, to get a sense of what 
the rest of the world's perception was of the show. Um, this opportunity came up uh, a while ago. It was it was brought to my attention, and you're right. We're you know we're knee deep in production as we speak. Um, you know I'm on the phone with the set and and with Mr. Harmon uh, yesterday, uh, but but. He, he genuinely wanted me to be here, and, and it's really about organization more than anything else. I, I, I get a little uh, uh, obsessive about that, but I knew exactly when this was gonna happen, um, and I planned my scripts accordingly. So I took two of my strongest writers, and I got their scripts in early, and, uh, and we prepped them uh, early, and, uh, and everything's running like a well-oiled machine, so. Uh, you hope. I hope. No, I know, no, actually. You know. Um, there, there's been some cross-pollination with, with NCIS Los Angeles. I wonder, is that something we'll see more of? Or, in fact, do, do you kind of like to think of those shows as just standing on their own so it's not necessarily a good idea to have the crossover? Well, they're, they're definitely all under the same umbrella, but uh, we're very, very different shows, um, stylistically, um, the kinds of stories that we tell. Um, you know, I tend to focus specifically on, on, on the mothership and, mm. uh, and, and, and Shane's involved with, uh, with Los Angeles and, and, and then, you know, we'll have to see what comes in the future. Do, do you, uh, I mean, do, do you need to kind of be in a regular contact with Shane in order to kind of be across their storylines and vice versa or is that not necessary? Yeah, no, we're always very aware of what, I mean, especially, you know, as any show would be that, that one show follows the other, uh, you know, very aware of the stories that are being told and, and make sure that they don't overlap in any way, so. And Gary, you know the show back to front better than anyone. And as you said, there are these ports in various towns, uh, or there are the NCIS offices, rather. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's scope to have, to make it an even bigger franchise and have different, uh, you know, Los Angeles and a another version of the show? There are certainly opportunities. Um, you know, the stories are endless. One of the, the fantastic things about NCIS, um, which initially, when I first took the job, you know, I, and I think other people think about it too, is you say, well, it's a, it's a Navy-based show, um, a Marine-based show, military-based show. How, how many stories can you find mm. in that world? Um, the truth is that, that they reach out to, um, in so many ways, um, work with other agencies, the FBI, the CIA, um, really have their hand in a million pots. And, and you know, so you can do everything from a from a, a murder story to a domestic abuse story to a terrorism story, and it all falls under the guidelines of, of NCIS. So, so, yeah, there are lots of opportunities there. And, and of course, the stories are different from week to week, but is, is there now, is there, is there a pattern to how a season unfolds? I know, for example, there was a huge cliffhanger, wasn't there, that you picked straight up with this season? Yeah, I really embraced the cliffhanger this last, <laughs> this, at the end of season nine. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, basically I like to start um, uh, the season picking up with some sort of cliffhanger where I left off the season before. Um, I also have a tendency, um, and the show has a history of doing this, of, of, uh, of sort of throwing in a whole bunch of little, what I like to call story cookies. I think in the computer world, in the game world, they're called cookies. Um, but, but basically little tidbits of things that are coming up in the season. So if you go back and you watch a season opener, you can always find um, little threads that I kind of leave dangling. And one of the, the beauties of, of NCIS is you can throw something out there, literally throw a line at it, and then come and revisit it nine episodes later, and the audience embraces it. Um, so I, I tend to sort of launch a whole bunch of little thoughts at the beginning. After the first episode, I tend to do seven or eight um, self-contained crime stories, self-contained storylines. And then usually around November sweeps, we, we throw in another big character arc. And we do that a couple of times through the season and then sort of end with a build to another, another wrap-up or cliffhanger. And, and then, so six or seven in, we could have kind of two episode or three or four episode story arcs. Is yeah, it tends not to be three or four, but I might do like this season in, in November in the States, we've got a really significant two-parter uh, uh, that has to do with post-traumatic stress um, in the military, and and uh, and and it's a, a a really lovely emotional story, and we've got a great guest cast, and we're just finished shooting that. So, who were so. the guests? Uh, uh, Brad Beyer, uh, who was on, oh my, uh, Jericho, um, okay. and and 
And is Alex Kingston? Alex parent? Kingston just joined us for another storyline um, from ER. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, that leads to something else. Um, yeah, and, and, and she's been terrific. We're filming that as we speak. Um, uh, it, the show has really gotten to a point, and, and some of it is reputation and the reputation that, that, that Mark Harmon establishes. Um, people like to come to work here uh, on the show. Uh, it's a really pleasant place to, to come as an actor, and, and, uh, and they have fun, and, and we've been attracting guest stars, you know, that, that have just been wonderful, and, and, and it's been a lot of fun to, to get people to come. And NCIS's show, you know, as we've said, gets great numbers, sells all over the world, and I know uh, Mark Harmon recently, I think, got a star on, on the Walk of Fame, but in, in black and white terms, it's not at the top of the list in terms of receiving awards. Do you find that frustrating, or do you just kind of point to the 20 million number? I, I, I find it frustrating for the actors because I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blessed with such a fantastic cast that I would love for them to get a little bit of that recognition. Um, and at the same time, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's going to sound goofy, but it's, it's honestly sort of a, a, an award to know that we're reaching the... the you know, the people that we are on a weekly basis, um, to know that in this market, in this world, in the States alone, that I'm, I'm reaching with DVR numbers, you know, 23 million people is, is crazy. Uh, and and uh, we, I was at a, a television critics event last spring and someone said to me, are we, are we targeting gun smoke? Are we trying to reach you know, whatever that was, 23 years or something like that. And, and I said to them, you have to remember with Gunsmoke, um, there were like three networks you know, at the time. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a different world now. I've got 150 channels to choose from. So to know that I've got 23 million viewers and a, from 150 channels to choose from, um, in a way, I sort of feel like I've already achieved that. You know, sure. it's already there, so. Um I mean, that makes perfect sense, and the numbers speak for themselves, but I mean, why, why is it that you're not picking up lots of gongs, do you think? Is it just the way that that, that, that system is set up in terms of you know, winning awards and such like? Uh, you know, the network television, broadcast television, um, we're sort of, we're targeting a, a broader audience. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's a different approach to storytelling, um, even from a, a you know a very basic idea of time. Um, you know, one of the joys of of working in the cable business is is having time to write scripts differently than you do in, in network. I mean, I, I you know it's it for what I do, it's all about meeting a schedule. Um, a long time ago, I had a fantastic conversation with John Wells and and was working on a show with him, and, and, it, and you know, you just want to keep the machine going. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky thing. I've got a show in production every eight days, and, uh, and you, have to, you have to meet that, and, and it's the only way to keep it on track. When you start production, how um, are, are the scripts done for the, for the whole season, and how fluid is that? Can you change things th along the way? No, we don't have the luxury of having the scripts done for the whole season, so we're usually, you know, I'd say, five scripts ahead, basically. And, uh, you know, right now I'm starting to think about there's a really significant storyline for Ziva that's going to happen after the holidays um, sometime in January, so we're sort of focused on that right now. And then uh, probably right after the holidays, I'll lock myself away with an eggnog and, and, uh, and, and start to think about uh, the finale. So. How, how, how big is the writing team? How many writers does it need to keep this kind of you know, juggernaut on? There are seven track? of us right now, and, uh, and a couple of us have been uh, on the show since day one. So okay. it's, it's very nice to have people around who have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of, uh, you know, of 218 episodes of television, and, and, uh, of and, and you know, I go to them a lot. So. I mean, are, are there themes that we can track through a season? I, I, read, um, I read somewhere that you talk, talked about, you know, one season being about fallen heroes and kind of notions around, around that. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's sort of the theme that I've been targeting for season 10, um, is, is we come back from this traumatic event, uh, 
very, uh, you know, significant explosion that happens at the end of season nine and, and how that psychologically uh, and emotionally affects our team. Um, and, and then the idea of sort of rising up, uh, you know, get, getting yourself back on your feet and rising up from the ashes, so to speak, um, uh, is absolutely sort of a theme that's going to carry all the way through season 10. You know, when, when Don uh, Belisario created the show and then I think it may have been season, I can't remember the season number, but there was the season of secrets. Um, you know, it's fun to kind of come up, it's more for us than anybody, uh, it's fun to kind of come up with a, with a theme that allows the writers to kind of focus on a specific kind of uh, area of storytelling. It's interesting, there are writers that have been there <coughs> since day one, and you spoke earlier about the kind of breadth of stories you can tackle, but I wonder... I'm sure the show will carry on while it's doing, doing these numbers, but do you see NCIS as something that, that could carry on for another 10 seasons? Could it stretch out indefinitely, or, does, like, or do all shows have a natural life cycle? No, look, it's, it's, uh, we love to go to work every day. Um, we recognize that this show is an anomaly right now. Um, to have the success that we're having 10 seasons into a show is extraordinary, and... And as I said, you know, I've got this fantastic crew and, and, and this amazing cast, and, and everyone's really enthusiastic about coming to work every day. Uh, I, uh, you know, we go on hiatus for the summer and we come back, and there's always a part of me that's like, is this going to be this, the year when we all sit in the writer's room and try and come up with stories, and we're going to look at each other with blank faces and say, uh-oh, we're done. Um, I have to say that we sit down in that room, and it's as if we didn't stop two months prior, you know, it, it, we, and, and as long as that sort of momentum and that energy is there, then, then the show will keep going, and I, and I promise you right now it is. And I, I wonder in a, a question from, uh, that was addressed to the guys on the last panel, in, in an era of Facebook and, and Twitter and the like, do you, do you like to connect with the audience, with the fans, or is, is that a dangerous thing to do? No, of... this, I have to tell you that the NCIS fans are unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's the most dedicated fan base that I've ever dealt with on a television show. And, and you know, I tend, if I, if I read everything, I wouldn't be able to do my job. Sure. But, but, um, but, you know, we have an extraordinary, we have 16 million friends on, on our Facebook page. We, we uh, you know, uh, the tweeting that goes on, the amount of, and, and it's amazing, like, you know, I'll try something in a story and I very quickly hear from the fan base whether it works for them or not. So, right. um, so we do pay attention as much as we can. And, and Gary, I, I have to ask, I was looking at your IMDb and the drama series that I mentioned there, you know, obviously NCIS, but then if you look a bit further, further down, you see some, some big ticket kids shows. Yes. And I, I, know, I know you started out um, in kids TV, how how on earth do you make the transition from Power Rangers twenty years later to be Duck running Man. NCIS? Yeah, Animaniacs. Uh, uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm sort of an eclectic freak, I guess. <laughs> I I, uh, I I genuinely made the decision um, early on that that it was time for me to sort of stop writing the kid stuff that I was doing, and I wanted to focus on drama. And, and then there was a bit of a reinvention that, that happened. It was and a I, conscious decision. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I took a step back, and I knew that I wanted to sort of uh, make, make the jump over. And, and, you know, I'm not going to say that it was easy, but, but uh, I've always sort of, you know, been the tortoise. I'm not the hare, so. Um, but it's been a very steady, um, uh, you know, build, and, and, I, and I'm very fortunate to be here. I think we should really take a look at NCIS. Having, yes. having talked about it for Let's the do that. best part of half an hour. Um, I think the clip we have is from the 10th season. And Yeah, I'm we assembled a couple of uh, things that I think a lot of stuff that people haven't seen yet, just little bits cool. and pieces from, uh, from season 10 that are coming up, and, and uh, I'd love to share them with everybody. Stuff that, so this hasn't gone out? No, there's yet. a lot of stuff that actually the cast hasn't even seen yet. So. <laughs> okay, good yeah. stuff. Let's, let's take a look at the video. Attacks against the United States Navy. Harper Deering. You know Deering had a son in the Navy, right? He was killed in a suicide attack while the ship was in port. Evan Deering. His father is targeting NCIS in retaliation for the son being reassigned to that destroyer. Director, he's not after you. He's after your car. Go.
<laughs> Dr. Mallard, you've had a heart attack. It was my car. <clears throat> Xenia on the top. The Bond villain from GoldenEye, Famke Jansen. She would kill men by squeezing her muscular, well-shaped thighs. Got her license! FBI! Well, 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 look at this. You and I are a lot alike, you know. You have a job to do, Gibbs. Do I have regrets? Yeah. Ah, the sweet smell of recycled air, the hot glare of an annoying skylight, the weird whir of a broken fax machine. Another day in paradise. Well, somebody woke up on the far side of the bed. Ziva? <gasps> that was a very good look back in the day. Get moving. Got a dead sergeant in Brooklyn. Jimmy's getting a little cocky in Ducky's big boy shoes. You had a heart attack, Ducky. Your own doctor told you to take a break. Old habits die hard, Mr. Palmer. So do old doctors, apparently. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, at one point in my life, I dabbled in boxing. And now you are my bucket boy, Mr. Palmer, so if you would be so kind. But you can tell us what Ducky was doing exhuming a body without telling Gibbs. NCIS? NCI who? You need to come with us. Oh! NCIS, we'd like to ask you just... Hey, when they run! Could have warned you against that. You ever gonna tell me what happened between you two? I told you. Never bring up his name. Your mother and I maintain a special relationship till the day she died. You married? Tried it a couple of times. It didn't work for me. And she changed her hairstyle. She asked if I liked it, and I was honest. Not always the best policy. You asking me out, McGee? Well, yeah, I, well, I've got tickets. Yeah, no, got that part. When's the concert, McGee? You know, technically, maybe I should be asking you out. You did say the first woman I see. <laughs> Cute, but you had your chance. Intrigue me, Abby. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Are you saying this was a mob hit? Or someone watches a lot of movies. Ziva Davi, did you just quote a movie? No. I quoted a book that was made into a movie. Enough! Finish your job, Wolf. You let my agents finish theirs. It's all right, Leon. Everyone is safe. And no one's blaming you. Good stuff. It's great to see see some of the show, um, Gary. We're we're running over, and I think you probably need to get back to the states to finish season ten. At some point, yes. Some point. Um, thank you for joining us. It was great to to kind of to get to know a little bit more about the show. I mean, it's supremely popular, so to kind of hear about your approach it was really was really fascinating. Uh, so please join me in saying thank you to Gary Glasberg. Thanks, Gary. It's my pleasure. Thank you, everybody.